afternoon alive church make some noise if you're happy to be alive i say this yeah, every yeah. week and i'm gonna say it again you guys can actually do better than that if you're happy to be alive make some noise for jesus yeah happy sunday happy sunday i love that band god bless you happy sunday to everyone um my name is roger a part of the crew here at live church I'm not just here to welcome you guys. AC Global, I'm going to look at that camera. AC Global, we love you. Happy Sunday. Hope you guys are having a great week. Okay, so this week, yeah, I really wanted to do something like super interactive, but I just can't be like bothered and I tried to think of something and it just didn't work. So I'm going to go back to my old usual ways when I welcome you guys. So literally, I just want you to stand up if you're in the building. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, if you remember that song. And then um, I literally want you to go to someone and just speak about how this series we've been in a series called i love worship we happy with that that was terrible we've been in a <clears throat> we've been in a sermon series called exactly perfect so i want you to speak to someone and tell them one thing that you've enjoyed in this series one important message you've taken worship team come on don't it's not awkward why saying hi i said speak come on the band are playing music so you can dance while you're speaking to someone. Two more minutes. If you're watching online, you can send your answers. I'll read it out, so don't worry. I still see you. Yeah. Sunday. Fun day. Oh, we're done. Okay, okay. Everyone's done. All right, come back to your seats. Let me see if anyone online said anything. Uh, nope. Okay. Thank you. All right, so this Sunday, like we said on Instagram, it is unfortunately not Step Out Sunday. How wet do you? Okay, don't worry, don't worry. Don't worry, there'll be another Sunday where you can testify, hallelujah. But this week we've got an amazing sermon coming from our brother Toby, still on the Kingdom Stewards. So I really want you to key in on what God's going to do today. I really want you to key in on what God's going to do from even the worship up until the end, even from the welcome. I really want you to just ask God, to give you a word and I really want you to just be expectant for the Bible tells us that he does exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think so if you re really are ready to just receive something from God why don't you just stand up on your feet as we praise and worship God led by our amazing alive worship praise the Lord hallelujah 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 give a joyful shout unto the Lord yeah, y'all is sad <laughs> Give a joyful shout unto the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We are here to praise our God. We're here to praise our maker. We're here to praise our redeemer, our first love. Amen. Do you love God? Like, like you know, like sometimes you just be sitting on deep and like, yo, I love God, you know. Like, I just want to, I just want him to just be exalted in everything I do. Like, I want him to just be the person that gets all the glory. If I get a good grade, I'm like, oh. No, you're amazing, like, you're so smart, no, thank God. Like, how many of us do that? You know, when someone compliments you, like, oh my gosh, no, like, you're so good at this, but it's like, thank God, man, thank God. And we say it as a pastime, but sometimes in our minds, we're really like, no, I genuinely want God to be exalted in everything I'm doing, in every victory, in every win I have, I want God to actually take the glory because he's the one who strengthens us. So we're just going to sing a song that exalts God today. Um, and I just want you guys to just be involved, you know, be happy, be joyful in the presence of the Lord and truly desire in your hearts that God will be exalted today. Amen. Amen. Let's go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. 
You're so amazing, God. You're worthy. We exalt you today, Jesus. Be exalted. Be exalted, our King. Over everything. Be exalted. Be exalted, our King. Yeah. Over everything, say. Over everything. Over everything. Be exalted. Be exalted, our King. Over everything. Over everything. Be exalted. Be exalted. We lift you high, oh God. Be exalted. Be exalted, our King. Over every. Over everything. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus, because we exalt Him high sits in the heavenlies and he stands above men hallelujah to our exalted king yeah how we love you how we love you our king over everything how we love you how we love you our king yeah over everything say over everything, over everything, yeah. I love you, our King. Over everything, over everything, how we love how you, we love how we love you, our King. Over everything, how we love you, you. Over everything, come on, make a joyful noise unto the lover of your soul. We love you and everything we have, Jesus. We give our hearts, our minds, our lives, our strength. We give it all to you. And we lift up the highest praise. Hallelujah. 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 We sing unto you, our King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We sing unto you, our King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The highest praise is yours. Unto you I king Unto you I Hallelujah 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 Unto you I king Hallelujah 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 We give you the highest praise oh God Unto you I king today because he deserves it and more hallelujah yeah. lord you're worthy lord you're worthy we sing unto you our king lord you're worthy lord you're worthy we sing we sing it unto you our king lord Jesus, He is the worthy one, the Lamb of God, the righteous Lamb that was slain for us. Hallelujah to you, the worthy King. Yeah, get the glory, get the glory we sing. It's for you, our King. Get the glory, get the glory we sing. It's for you, our King. Get the glory, get the glory. Get the glory. Take the honor and the glory. 
and give a glorious shout and give sweet words unto your king because he is glorious in holiness and he is fearful in praises forever doing wonders and we give him the highest praise which is hallelujah God we worship you God we worship you we magnify you oh Lord take all the glory oh God hallelujah to your name yes God yes Father Yes, God, we worship you. How many of us know that we serve a victorious God? We serve a mighty God. We serve a God who holds all power in his hands. We serve a God who is so powerful that the earth cannot contain him. He is fast, fast and far beyond what our minds can imagine. He genuinely is the most powerful God. Isaiah chapter 6 says that his train filled the temple. And that means that he never lost the battle because in those times when kings would win wars they would take the train or the robe of the king who they defeated and they would sew onto their robe and whoever had the longest train signified a king that was victorious a king that never lost so when Isaiah chapter 6 says that his train fills the temple it means that our God is, is his streak is ongoing his streak is ongoing as in till now till this very second he has never lost the battle Till this very moment and even till tomorrow and even next week and even next year he will never ever lose a battle you can't be a weak God and never lose it doesn't happen you can't be a God that has no power he has all power he has all power that that even 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 Philippians says that at the mention of his name every knee will bow in earth and in the heavens and even under even the devil even demons are subject to the power of God that the very earth will tremble at the mention of his name that the very ground will shake when he speaks come on we serve a powerful God and we want to declare that today we don't want to just sing this song we want to really make a declaration today against every foe against every force of darkness that we serve a God that makes the earth tremble when he speaks that demons flee when he speaks that that even he he even has all power to give Peter Peter walked and his shadow healed people as in his shadow the shadow of a man that was empowered by God could heal infirmities that's how powerful our God is he's not just a being he's not just just a loving God but he's a powerful God and we want to make that declaration today that our God is all powerful that his name holds all power and all authority even under the earth so I want you guys to really believe that as we sing this song and we're gonna sing the song all together but this is a declaration more than a song it's a declaration to everything that might come against us that we serve a God who shakes the earth when he speaks when he moves so let's sing this song together and we sing Jesus Jesus you make the darkness tremble Jesus Jesus you silence fear Jesus Jesus you make the darkness tremble Jesus Jesus you silence fear, lift it up, sing Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Lift it up, sing Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. You 
make the darkness tremble, Jesus. to lift your voice and sing that. Do you believe that Jesus is who he says he is? He is a God that makes the darkness tremble and shake. He is a God that makes demons fear him. He is a God that makes the earth tremble when he speaks.
all authority is yours in heaven and the earth. Yeah. Even death could not hold you down. Even death could not hold you down. Yeah. We call on your name. We call on your name. We call on your name. of adversity in the face of trial we sing and in the midst of the storm and the waves we sing in the face of the mountain we sing because your name holds all power Yes, God, we know that your name holds all power. Jesus, Jesus. 
with us, O God. You are with us, O God. No music, one time. Just lift it up to God. Worship. I'm going to read from First Chronicles 16, verse 34. It says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his loving kindness endures forever. I don't know how many of you are here, not because of God. I'm here because of God, because of Jesus. We're standing here today because of Jesus. I just want us to open our mouths and thank this good God for his loving kindness that endures forever. Just open your mouth and give him thanks. He's worthy. None can be compared to him. Father, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, because you are worthy. There is none like you. In heaven and on earth, there is none like you. Father, we thank you for providing fighting for us, for protecting us. Father, we worship you because you are worthy. We worship you, Jesus, because you are worthy. Who is like unto you, my God? There is nobody. Father, I just thank you. I return all the glory to you. I return all adoration to you because you are great. You are mighty. I am here because of you, Lord. Who am I that you are mindful of? Father, I just give you thanks. Even if I had 10,000 tongues, Lord, it would not be enough. But Father, I'm just grateful. I'm just grateful. I want you to know, Lord, that I'm grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. Take all the glory for bringing us here today, for letting us be here today, because we know we're here for a reason. We know we're here because of you. Father, we just return all glory to your holy name. Take all the glory, Lord. Be the center. Take all the glory, Lord. We leave none for ourselves. Take all the glory, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, our maker. We thank you, our redeemer. We thank you, our protector. We thank you, our healer. We thank you, our provider. There is none like you, God. There is none like you, God. We join the heavenly host to say, hallowed be your name. We join the heavenly host to say, hallowed be your name. We magnify you, Jesus, because you are amazing. You are awesome. You are awesome. Keep thanking him. Keep thanking him. Keep thanking him. There is none like you, Jesus. There is none like you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Ephesians 2 verse 14 says, For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. Everybody here knows what is going on in the world, um, what's going on in Ukraine, what's going on um, in Russia, and what's going on in other parts of the world. Like, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of chaos, a lot of conflict, a lot of hostility. Let us just open our mouths and ask God for peace for peace around the world, wherever there is chaos, wherever there's hostility, prayers in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask for your peace. We ask for your peace. In your word, oh God, you said that you have destroyed the barrier and Lord, you have broken the, you have the you have removed the wall of hostility. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that your peace that surpasses all understanding, you will release it now on your children. Wherever there is conflict, oh God, in whatever part of the world, oh God, Father, we pray you release your peace, your peace in the name of Jesus. Remove every wall of hostility, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare peace. We decree and decree and declare peace over Ukraine and Russia in the mighty name of Jesus. We stand, oh God, as the children of God today and we declare peace we declare peace we declare peace all over the world in the name of Jesus in any country that there is conflict in any country that there is chaos in every area that there is chaos oh Lord we declare your peace we declare your peace in the mighty name of Jesus oh Lord release your peace release your peace oh God upon your people and father let there be no more chaos let there be no more conflict in the mighty name of Jesus thank you father in Jesus mighty name we've prayed 
let's take the same prayer point into our families and let's just pray for anywhere that there is chaos or conflict in any of our families that the Lord will instill his peace in the mighty name of Jesus prayer in the name of Jesus father we pray in the mighty name of Jesus that in every area of our families oh God that there may be chaos father you know our hearts you know our needs oh God in any area of our family oh God in any area of our lives oh God that there is chaos or there is conflict that you will declare your peace in the mighty name of Jesus just like you said in your word we decree and declare peace be still in the mighty name of Jesus we declare peace over our families we rebuke every form of conflict we rebuke every form of chaos in the mighty name of Jesus and Lord we declare your peace in Jesus mighty name we've prayed and the final prayer point that I just want us to pray today, um, Matthew 5, 16 says, In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. If there is one thing I want above everything else, is for people to look at me and see my Father who is in heaven. So I want us to open our mouths now and pray that, Oh God, let people see me and let them glorify you. Let them glorify you because of my life. Prayers in Jesus' name. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray pray oh God that when people see me they see you oh God let my life be a testimony of your grace let my life be an ex let, let my life be an expression of your grace let my life be an expression of your love let my life be an expression of your kindness that when people see me oh God they see my deeds oh God they will glorify your holy name oh God in the mighty name of Jesus let my life be an expression of your grace my God in Jesus mighty name we've prayed and so, Father, we thank you. We thank you for answered prayers. We thank you, oh God, for bringing us here today. We thank you, oh God, for your peace. We know you've instilled your peace around the world. We know you've instilled your peace in our families in the name of Jesus. We thank you, oh God, because we know that by the reason of our prayers, people will see us and they will glorify your holy name. People will see our lives, oh God, as an expression of your grace. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Um, just before we start worship, can we get Matthew 6 on the screen, please? Matthew 6, verse 9, I believe. And we're going to read it together, church, if that's okay. Is that okay? Perfect. Okay. So, one, two, three, let's read. In this manner, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Verse 10, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven verse 11 give us this day hey, the daily bread give us our debts and verse 13 may the lord bless the reading of his word with this in our hearts let's raise the sound to yahweh let's raise the sound to him with this in our heart, with this prayer in our hearts, let's raise a sound to God right now in this moment. Raise a sound, raise a sound to your maker, to the one who is and is to come. The king that reigns over all of us, the earth is his footstool. Who is this king of glory? Who is this mighty one? The one mighty in battle. Raise the sound, raise the sound. We're going to join the 24 elders up in heaven right now. And the angels, and we're going to cry out. We're going to worship with them in this moment. So I need you to cry out. Cry out. Raise the sound, raise the sound. Raise the sound, raise the sound, raise the sound. Father Lord, come and have your way. Come and have your way. Oh, be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. The mighty one wants to come through. The mighty one wants to come through. He wants to come through. So we open the gates of our hearts. So we open the gates of our minds. We open the gates of our character right now in this moment. Lift it up. A life church, lift it up. For Yahweh to hear you, lift it up. Lift it up. For the mighty one. The one who sees. The one who loves us, the one who comforts us, the man of war is his name. He's our advocate. His name is Jesus, my healer, my provider. We call him Jireh, the Alpha, the Omega. Lift it up. 
is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever amen yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever amen See, oh, yours, yours is the kingdom yours it's in your is hands the power it's in your yours. hands We're basically saying that God is the center of everything. We're basically saying God's authority is over everything. That even this earth, that we have so much free will, so much power, God still has the final say. God still has the final say. We read the scripture of how we are meant to pray. And there was a reason why that this was there. That for, for that is the kingdom, the glory and power forever and ever. Amen. There's a reason why it's there. It's to remind you that God is the only person that has the authority figure. Yes, we have our presidents. Yes, we have our prime ministers. Yes, we have people in the council and all of these things. But the final say is to Yahweh. The final say over your life is to Yahweh. The final say over your mind is to Yahweh. So raise the sound to him. Sing yours. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power.
life church declare it from your heart to life church hey yours is the kingdom yours is the glory yours is the kingdom my mind my heart is all yours and this might be raise the sound raise the sound Yahweh is here Yahweh
if there's anybody here that believes God deserves all the glory, will you just take one minute and just praise his name? Just take one minute and lift his name up above every other thing, above every situation, above every circumstance. Just lift the name of Jesus. God we are so thankful because if there is one thing that is true it is that if not for you we will not be here Jesus if not for you we will not be here we will not be standing here we would have not survived some of the things that we went through depression anxiety suicidal thoughts but God if not for you physical sickness mental sickness but God if not for you we will not be here so God because of that we give you all the glory God we give you all the praise because you are deserving of that and more come on if you believe God is deserving why don't you lift up his name why don't you thank him for some of the things he's done for you God you're so worthy of everything that is within me God you're so worthy of everything that I can give to you Father God, we're here for you. God, we are here for you. So God, I'm praying and I'm believing that today you will make your presence known, oh God. Father God, I am praying and I am believing that every single person under the sound of my voice shall have an encounter with you. An encounter that is not temporary, but an encounter that is permanent. God, I'm praying that every single one of us will have an encounter that is truly life-changing. God, I am believing that every single one of us will have an encounter that leads us to repentance. Because it's that encounter that we can never forget. Father God, that is what we are believing for today. And God, I say today, you have your way. God, I pray as you preach this message, may the words be filled with your Holy Spirit power. And God, may we not leave the same way that we came here today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, the church said, come on, if anybody's excited to be in the house of God today, for one more time, just give him a loud shout of praise. Come on now, you can all have your seats. have a few minutes but before we go into the message I want us to do something if there is anybody here who has any type of physical pain any type of physical pain regardless of how small or how big it may be can I please ask you to stand on your feet regardless of what the pain is just stand on your feet and believe in God's about to heal whatever it is that you're experiencing whatever pain no matter where in your body it is no matter how bad the pain is, no matter how light the pain is, I'm believing God's about to heal some people today. So every person with pain, will you just stand on your feet? No, longer, no matter how long you've had that pain as well. Now if everybody in a live church, we're a church that prays for each other. So if you're close to somebody who's standing, will you just stretch your hands towards them and will you begin to, to speak healing over them? Don't ask God for healing, but command healing. God is, he's given us that authority. So, so begin to command healing over them. Father God, we are believing for your healing power to flow across this room right now, oh God. Father God, regardless of what the pain is, God, regardless of what the situation is, oh God, I'm believing that your healing power does not miss anybody. So Father God, I'm believing, oh God, that every single person who is standing with some sort of pain that pain is gone from right now in the name of Jesus God I am believing oh God no matter how long standing that pain has been God I'm believing that that pain is gone right now in the name of Jesus God we as a church stand in faith believing that you are a God that still heals 
So Father God, I say one more time, thank you, thank you, thank you for healing, healing every single person in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, can we give God some praise because he's healed some people today. Live Church, how are we doing today? Are we well? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Super, super excited for today's message. Um, the service has been absolutely incredible so far. I think that worship set was phenomenal. Come on, come on. Can we give it up for a live worship for that worship set? May that led prayers. Those prayers were so powerful and so sound. And I believe God is changing lives through those prayers that we've prayed. So excited for today's message. But before we go into that, I want to greet some very, very special people in the room today. Do we have anybody joining us for the first time? If you're here for the first time, this is your first time at AC, will you just shoot your hand in the air? Here we have a person here, we have someone right there. Come on AC, let's make them feel real welcome today. Come on. Man, we're so grateful that you guys will join us today. It really means the world to us. The fact that you don't know us, but you chose to be here with us. It, it, we are privileged to have you. So come on AC, can we, can we celebrate them one more time, please? Man, I'm so moved by, by the work that God is doing in this church. Sometimes when we, when we ask first-timers to put their hands up, I, 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 I remember about the first days that we started, the early days, I remember there was like, there used to be like one person on the worship team worshiping, but God has just expanded us so much now. I can't remember a week where we haven't had any new people and, and, and you know, we can't take the glory for that. That has to go to God. So can we, just, can we just all just give glory to God for what he's doing in this house? Because this vision is not man's vision, but this vision is God's vision. And every vision that God has, he's always going to expand it. So come on, can we give God one more, one more loud shout of praise for what he's doing in a live church? Come on. God is so good. He's so good. And I'm, and I'm believing that we're only at the beginning of what God wants to do. I'm believing that we haven't even seen, we haven't even scratched the surface of what God wants to do in this house. And I can't wait to experience it with every single one of you. So many of you probably know that this Sunday was, was supposed to be Step Out Sunday. This Sunday was meant to be Step Out Sunday, and I know maybe some of you are a bit disappointed because we're not doing Step Out Sunday today, but I can guarantee you that Step Out Sunday will be on the 10th of April, so put that in your diaries. You know, for all the people who plan to give testimonies today, I'm believing that you'll be able to give those testimonies on the 10th of April, so put that in your diaries, and you know, I, I semi-promise that we won't change that. I'm pretty sure we won't change that. So be expectant for Step Out Sunday on the 10th of April. The reason why Step Out Sunday isn't today is because God really wanted us to continue this, this Kingdom Steward series. Have we been enjoying this, this series so far? I believe this series so far has been, has been life-changing. We're on, we're on week five, no, we're on week six of this series. So we've had five messages on this series and I believe that those messages have truly been life-changing and for me it's almost like those five messages that we've had kind of like kind of like built the cake like they built the cake and then what God wants to do for these next three Sundays is kind of put the icing he wants to decorate the cake he wants to put the cherries on top so that's exactly why we said step out Sunday we're gonna push that back a bit because there's a few things that God still wants to say in this sermon series and today's word today's word is going to be deep. Today's word is going to be really, really, really deep. This is a message that I've been wanting to preach for three years now. I, I kid you not, God sees my heart. I've been wanting to preach this message for over three years now, but God has not allowed me to preach this message because he said, hey, listen, if you preach this message before I tell you when to preach this message, you're going to butcher this message. You're going to kill this message and it's not going to do the justice that I need it to do. But God has finally given us as a church, you know, the, the, the command to preach this message, and it's a deep message. So, spoiler alert, let me just let you guys know now, this message isn't going to be a comfortable message. Because I genuinely believe today, God is going to do a heart surgery on some of us today. And how many of us know that a heart surgery ain't, it's not, it's not very comfortable. You know, nobody, nobody who's getting a heart surgery wakes up in the morning like, yes, heart surgery today. Like nobody does that because heart surgeries aren't comfortable. So honestly, I'm not expecting this message to get that many oohs and that many ahs. I'm not expecting this message to get that many that's goods because this message isn't a comfortable message. 
Because God has said today he wants to, he wants to cut into the deepest parts of our hearts. You're probably wondering, okay, Toby, you've hyped up this message. Like, what are we speaking about today? And I think the Bible gives that away because Jesus says, where your treasure is, that is the exact same place where your heart is. So today we're going to be speaking all about finances, particularly tithing. But really and truly, we're not speaking about finances. We're speaking about your heart because where your treasure is, that is where your heart is. If you're taking notes today, the title of my message is it's a heart issue. It's a heart issue. Now today I really want to encourage you all to take notes. Because today I ain't really going to be in my preaching bag too tough. I'm going to be in my teaching bag. Today I want to really, really teach on this message of tithing. But before I go into the message, it will be remiss if I did not do this. I want to speak to all of the people who have received the message on finances from somebody who had personal gain at the forefront of their mind. Because the truth is in this generation, there are so many people who like to twist the word, the beautiful word of God, the beautiful promises of God, and manipulate people for their own personal gain. So for all of those people who have received the message on finances in that way, I want to apologize to you. But I also want to ask that every single one of you will come into this message with an open heart. Because I genuinely, I know in my heart that God desires for every single one of you to live a blessed life. However, there are some very, very important truths that you must know about God when it comes to finances in order for you to live that blessed life. So once again, I want to ask all of those people, please come into this message with an open heart. I'm about to biblically and truthfully teach you the truths about tithing. It's a heart issue. Are we all ready for today's word? Are we ready for today's message? Awesome. Let's jump straight into it. If you'll turn with me to the book of Malachi, the book of Malachi, chapter 3, from verse 6. We're going to read to about verse 10. Usually I'd read the whole scripture, but today I don't want to miss anything, so I'm going to just break it down line by line. Malachi, chapter 3, from verse 6. It starts off by saying, For I am the Lord and I do not change. Now I have to pause right there immediately. Because I love how God clearly states who he is and what he does not do. He says, I am the Lord and I do not change. It's almost as if God knew, which he does by the way. It's almost as if God knew that there will be a moment in time where one of people's main arguments when it comes to finances and tithing is that, oh, the God of the Old Testament is different from the God of the New Testament. But God clearly states here, for I am the Lord and I do not change. Does God change a life, church? Does God change? He says, for I am the Lord and I do not change. Then he goes on to say, For I am the Lord and I do not change, therefore you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. So at this moment in time, he's speaking to the children of Israel. And he's saying to the children of Israel, listen, I am the Lord and I do not change, that's why I haven't killed you yet. Because at this point in time, the children of Israel were doing all evil things, they weren't obeying God's law, they were doing wicked things against God, but God, because he does not change, he said to them, I am the Lord and I do not change, so that is why I haven't killed you. I am the Lord and I do not change. My mercy doesn't change. My grace doesn't change. My faithfulness doesn't change. My promises over your life doesn't change. Aren't we glad that we serve a God who doesn't change based on our performance? Do you know how good it is that we serve a God who says regardless of what you do, regardless of what you say, my nature doesn't change. It's crazy because because it just makes me as a human being feel so fickle. Because us as human beings, just like that, we can change. I remember like two weeks ago, I was playing FIFA with one of my friends, Glenn. And Glenn, is a, he, he's terrible at FIFA. He's, he's not very good. I'll say that on camera happily. He's not good at FIFA, but he was using PSG. And the people who play FIFA know that, you know, it's definitely a cheat. And he was beating me on FIFA, and I was getting very, very frustrated to the point where I was genuinely thinking about cutting him off. This is one of my closest friends, but he was frustrating me so much that I was actually thinking, I don't don't, don't even know if we need to be friends. Like, what does this guy actually bring to my life? You know, I was genuinely thinking that. 
And it's funny, but I'm actually serious. Like, this is what I was thinking. But for me, it just makes me realize how incredible God is. That for us human beings, we can change just like that. Some of us, we, we can cut people off because they didn't attend our birthday meal. But God, on the other hand, regardless of what we do, regardless of what we say, God says, I am the Lord and I do not change. Nothing about me is going to change. Come on, can we give it up for a God who doesn't change? He says, for I am the Lord and I do not change. Therefore, you are not consumed, O sons of, da of Jacob. Verse 7, yet from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Now, I need to pause there because I need to explain to you what the word ordinance means. If you're taking notes, which I, I really, really do encourage you to take notes. The word ordinance simply means a principle of ordinary behavior. The word ordinance comes from the word ordinary. It's a principle of ordinary behavior. This is very, very important. So let me give you an example. If, let's, say, let's say that I attend a gym for the first time, a new gym for the first time. That gym will give me a notice that, that, that if I'm using the weights in this gym, I have to put the weights back when I am finished. Because it is an ordinance that all people who use the weights in this gym must put the weights back. Because it's a principle of ordinary behavior. Does that make sense? So God, so God is saying to the children of Israel that, that I am upset because you have moved away from my principles of ordinary behavior. Now this is so important. Because one of the main things that people say about tithing is that I don't need to tithe because I'm no longer under the law. Which is very, very true. That is absolutely correct. However, stealing was under the law, but it's a principle of ordinary behavior. Not killing somebody was under the law, but it's a principle of ordinary behavior for Christians. Not committing adultery was under the law. But it's a principle of ordinary behavior for Christians. Tithing is under the law. But it's a principle of ordinary behavior for Christians. So just because something is, just because we're no longer under the law, doesn't now mean that I can now do whatever it says or I don't have to do whatever it says. I can't, I can't, I can't kill somebody and the police find me and I tell the police, oh well, you know, that was under the law. Like, it doesn't work like that. You don't get to steal from somebody and say, well, I'm no longer under the law, so I'm allowed to. It doesn't work like that. Why? Because it's a principle of ordinary behavior for Christians. And God is saying here to the children of Israel that, he says, he says, for I am the Lord and I do not change. Therefore, you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. Yet from the days of my father, you have gone away from my ordinances. You have gone away from my principles of ordinary behavior. And we will see that he's speaking about tithing says, you've gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. And he says, return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. If you're taking notes, underline the words, says the Lord of hosts. Just so that you know that a preacher didn't make this up. This is God's words. This is God speaking here. The same God that does not change. He says, return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you said, the children of Israel said, in what way shall we return? And listen to what God says here. He says, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. I have literally looked at every credible Bible translation that I can find. And all of the translations say the word rob. And I had to question, why do all of them say rob? Like, why, why doesn't some of them say, will a man steal from God? But all of them say, will a man rob from God? Do you know why? Because there's a big difference between robbing from somebody and stealing from somebody. Stealing focuses on the thing that was taken. Robbing focuses on the person that it's taken from. So now when you see it like that, it gets personal. It's almost as if God is saying, listen, don't focus on the fact that you're stealing money. Focus on the fact that you're robbing from your creator. That's what he's saying to the children of Israel. Make this personal. It's not like you're just stealing money. Like, forget it. Remember that it's me. 
The one who delivered you from everything that you went through. The one who delivered you from Egypt when you needed me. The one who was there for you every single moment of your life where you thought that it was the end. I was there for you. That is the one who you are robbing from. He says to the children of Israel, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. Continuing in verse 8, children of Israel respond saying, well, in what way have we robbed you? Such an interesting question to me because it's like, they didn't even realize that they were robbing God. They didn't even realize how important this was on God's heart. They're like, wait, robbed you? Like, in, in what way have we robbed you? And he says, you've robbed me in tithes and in offerings. And that's it right there. God is saying that you have all gone away from my principles of ordinary behavior and you've all been robbing me. God, in what way have we been robbing you? He says, you've been robbing me in tithes and in offerings. And this message is so imperative because for some of us, it's just lack of understanding. We didn't really know that this was so important on God's heart. He says, you've been robbing me in tithes and in offerings. What exactly is tithes? Tithes is 10% of your income. So what it means to tithe, it means to give to God 10% of whatever you make. So for example, if you're somebody who gets paid once a month, you tithe 10% once a month. If you're somebody who gets paid twice a month, you tithe 10% of your income twice a month. That's what it means to tithe. The word tithe literally means a tenth. And there are also some, some, some things that it's very important that I debunk about tithing. Two very, very important things. If you made your money illegally, please do not tithe that. Uh, it's actually not, like I'm being dead serious. Like I'm being so serious. Like, like if you made your money illegally, like honestly, like we don't want that. Like don't, don't give that because it's just not your money. Like you can't steal from people, do illegal things and then bring it to the house of God. And it, like it just doesn't work like that. That's one very important thing that I need to debunk. A second extremely important thing that I must debunk is you don't tithe student loan. Now, it's so important that I had to say this because there will be many people who will try to manipulate young people in thinking that you tithe student loan, but you don't tithe student loan. The reason why is because student loan is not yours. That's money that you are borrowing. God says tithe your income, money that you have worked for. So you don't tithe student loan. Don't make people think that here. Don't tithe your student. Keep that. Like, like you need that. Like, keep that, you know? Like, don't make people think that you need to give 10% of that because it, it's not your money. You only tithe your income. If you've worked for something and you got paid for it, that's what God expects you to tithe. God says to the children of Israel that you have robbed me in tithes and offerings. I love how God says tithes and offering because he wants you to understand like these are two different things. You know, you don't, you, don't, you don't get to not tithe because you gave offering. It doesn't work like that. Tithe is 10% of your income. Offering is above and beyond your tithe. But next week I'll speak more on offering. God says, you've robbed me in tithes and offering. What he says next. Verse 9, it says, so you are cursed with a curse for you have robbed me. Look at how he continues saying that word robbed. Like he said it like four times now. You are cursed with, with a curse for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Verse 10, he says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. So you're probably wondering, oh, well, Toby, you've been speaking about tithe and you've been saying how tithe is, is bringing to God 10% of, of, of my income. So, so where do I bring that into? It says it right here. God says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse the storehouse is the church now just so that you know i'm not coloring the bible and i'm not filling things in on my own because it's super important that we see this from a biblical lens i'll show to you that the storehouse is the church nehemiah chapter 10 verse 38 it says and the priest the descendant of aaron shall be with the levites when the levites receive tithes and the levites shall bring up a tenth of the tithes to the house of our god to the rooms of the storehouse so in those days, the storehouse were rooms inside of God's house. So you bring your 10%, you bring your tithe to the church. 
We all on the same page so far? Is this good? Come on. He says, so when you bring, when God says bring your tithes, he's saying that you should bring it into the storehouse. Then the Bible continues on to say, I'm going to read it from verse 10 again because this is good. It says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. It's God speaking again. He says, and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, and see if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Do you know that this is the only place in scripture where you find God encouraging us to try him? There's no other place in scripture where you'd find that. But God says when it comes to your time, When it comes to the area of your finances, he says, try me. Tithing isn't only a test for your heart. Tithing is a test for God. God says, bring all your tithes to the storehouse and try me in this area. And what follows that? He says, try me in this, says the Lord of hosts, and see if I will not bring for you says, try me in this, says the Lord of hosts, and see if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. God is saying, this is not a preacher that made this up. God is saying, if you try me in this area of your finances, See if I will not open up for you the windows of heaven and pour out so much blessings that you will not have room to contain it. God is saying, if you try me in this area, test me. The same God that does not change. He says, test me in this area and see if I will not open for you windows of heaven and give you blessings so much that you will not be able to contain it. This is why I'm so passionate about the topic of tithing. It's not because the church needs your money. No, church don't need your money. Church needs God's money. And God's already promised me that this house will be a house that doesn't struggle financially. So it's not because the church needs your money. It's because it's a principle to living a blessed life. That's the reason why I'm so passionate about preaching this message to you. It's because I desire for every single one of us to live a blessed life. But God has given us the principle to living a blessed life. He says, try me in the area of tithing and see if I do not open up the windows of heaven for you. The same God that doesn't change. How is it that so many of us, we can trust God with everything else? Can trust God with everything else? Some of us, we can happily claim that my faith, I have faith. But when he says this promise, we don't believe this promise. This is the only area of God that we don't believe. This is when we think God is a liar. We can trust God in everything else, but the moment it's about our finances. And God says, literally test me. We're like, no, I'm not. No, I don't really trust you. It's a promise from God. And God is not fickle like you and I. God is not a man that he will lie. So if God says, if you do A and you will receive B, if you do A, you shall receive B. He says, if you trust me in this area of tithing, you shall live a blessed life. What more do do we want from him? He literally clearly says it there. This is the principle to living a blessed life. Why is God moved by this area of tithing so much? Because it's one of the greatest acts of faith. Because where your treasure is, that is where your heart is. God don't need your money. God wants your money. Why? Because he wants your heart. And money is the pathway to your heart. Your income is the pathway to your heart. And God just wants you to trust him in this area. God promises that in this area of your finances, if you trust him, he'll bless you more than you can ever imagine. He's promising that he's a God that will do exceedingly and abundantly more than you could ever ask or think. He's promising that he's a God that will supply your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. If he himself has said these words, what more do we need to believe him? Alive Church, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging you to test God in this area of your life. 
and see if he doesn't open up the windows of heaven for you and pour out such blessings upon your life that you will never be able to even contain because it's a promise from God. <laughs> but the sad truth is, everyone becomes a theologian when it comes to tithing. <laughs> there are some people, you've never even read a theological book, but as soon as we bring up the word tithing, you become the greatest theologian known to mankind. There are some people that you don't even want to dive deep into scripture until it comes to the point of proving that you don't need to tithe. That's how Christians are in this day and age. You won't even want to read the word of God until it comes to you proving that you don't need to tithe. Do you see how this is a heart issue? Do you see how it's an issue of the heart? It's not about anything, it's about the heart. Some of us, we will look for every single material that we can find to prove the preacher wrong that you don't need to tithe. It's about the heart. Are we really so, 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 so greedy? Are we really so, so moved and, and, and manipulated by our finances that we will literally do everything just to prove that we don't have to tithe? If it comes to a theological debate about proving Jesus rose, rose, rose again, you won't even take part in that. But tithing? As soon as you mention tithing. Well, basically, um, that was in the Old Testament. And, you know, like, um, we went along Old Testament. Don't you see how this is an issue of the heart? Don't you see how this is an issue of the heart? And one of, one of the most famous, or one of the most used, argue, I don't even want to call it an argument, it frustrates me. One of the most used statements about tithing that people like to make when it comes to proving tithing wrong is that tithing was something that they did in the Old Testament. They don't do it in the New Testament. That statement right there makes me question how much you love God. I hate to sound harsh, but that statement makes me question how much you love God. Because how is it that the people of the Old Testament who only saw a glimpse of who Jesus was going to be. How is it that the people of the Old Testament, who only heard prophecies of who Jesus would be, how is it that the people of the Old Testament only saw who potentially Jesus could be, were able to give 10%, but you and I of the cross, you and I who have experienced the fullness of grace, you and I who have seen the Old Testament prophecies fulfilled, we struggle when it comes to 10%. It makes me question your love for God. People that were, that were going off of off, off scriptures of if Jesus was real were able to give 10%. But you and I who literally have his spirit living on the inside of us, when it comes to, oh, 10%, oh, I, I don't know about that. That was an Old Testament. If it was an Old Testament thing, how much more now, us that have experienced grace? Don't you see how it's a heart issue? But many people, even after that, all that I've set up until now should be enough to show you that God still believes in time. Why do I even need to say still if he's the God that doesn't change? But all that I've said should be enough to show you that God still believes in tithing. But I know, I know for some people it won't be enough. In fact, for some people, they, it's not until I see Jesus say it that I will believe it. Okay, Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. If this is what you need to believe in tithing, Matthew 23, verse 23. Jesus himself, if you open your Bible, you will see that this is in red. That means Jesus said it. He says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint, anias, and cumin, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, like justice and mercy and faith. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. Jesus is literally saying to the, to the scribes and Pharisees, he's complaining at them because they were ones who were so focused on tithing that they forgot about, about, about being ones who extended mercy and ones who extended uh, justice and, 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 ones, and ones who extended love. So Jesus was, was, was calling them hypocrites, saying, how is it that you guys focus so much on tithing, but you don't focus on the more important things? 
than justice, mercy. But Jesus himself says, these you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. He says, grammatically, let's think about that. Tithing you ought to have done without neglecting the more important matters of extending justice, mercy. What more do we want? People will even argue it's the translation. That's the NKJV translation. But if you want more, ESV version. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you tithe mint and dill and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice, mercy and faith. These you ought to have done without neglecting the others. KJV version, because some people only believe that's the true version. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anias and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy and faith. These ought to have done without not leaving the others undone. And ASB version, I don't even know what that stands for, but woe to you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you tithe mint and dill and cumin and have neglected the weightier provisions of the law, like justice, mercy and faithfulness, but these are the things you should have done without neglecting the others, NLT version, Jesus help me. NLT version, what sorrow awaits you teachers of religious law and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are careful to tithe even the tiniest income from your herb gardens, but you ignore the more important aspects of the law like justice, mercy and faith. You should tithe, yes, but not neglect the more important things. What more do we need? If Jesus himself said it, what more do we need? Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Your word that doesn't miss anything. Ah, oh, that's it. It's the truth about tithing. That is the biblical truth about tithing. But it's a shame that we have to go into so much detail and work so hard to prove a point about giving 10% to the one who gave everything. What? We have to work so hard to prove a point about giving 10% to the God who literally became man and gave everything. To the God who created human beings but decided to become a human being and come down and give everything to the God who took off the robe of glory and put on the robe of mankind to come down and give everything to the God who stepped out of divinity and stepped into creation and came down and gave everything it is that God who we have to work so hard to prove to give 10% our income for please the one thing I want to really teach you about tithing is that you don't tithe just to be blessed you don't tithe to receive you tithe because of what he's already done you give 10% because he's already given 100%. But don't you see God's nature in this? Don't you see how good he is? If God didn't talk about the blessings that come after tithing, we should still be ones who tithe because he's given 100%. But he is so good that he says, even after you give 10%, I will still bless you on top of that. Don't we see his nature? Don't we see his passion for us? Don't we see how much, he, how much we mean to him? That even after we give him what he rightfully deserves, he still says on top of that, I will bless you. The God that we serve, friends. That's the truth about tithing. Just to really bring this alive to you, can I please, I want three volunteers, Shagun Roj and Dunks, could you come up real quick? Just come up real quick. I can really make this real to you as we close. 
y'all could just stand in the line. Shingham, you can stand there. Dunk, you can stand next to him. Now imagine if I made a decision and I said, all right, guys, I'm going on an extended ministry trip. I'm going on an extended ministry trip for about six years. I'll be coming back, but in that six years, I'll be going. Fiance shaking her head. But then I say to these three that, hey, listen, I'm going to give you guys a certain amount of money. And when I go, <laughs> I want you guys to give 10% to my fiance. I want you guys to give 10% of my wife, of what I give you. Every single month, I'll be giving you guys a certain amount. And every month, I want you guys to give just 10% of what I give you to my fiance as I'm gone. So imagine to Roger, giving 10,000 pounds every month. He said, hallelujah. Imagine to Shengu, I give him 10,000 pounds every month. Dunks, I give him 10,000 pounds every month. And I say to the three of them, so I'm expecting that every month you'll give my fiance how much? A thousand pounds. Every month without fail. I'm trusting you guys with this. Now imagine, Rog, the, the three of them, the one I least believe in. Imagine I, I, I call Grace and I ask her, okay, how's it doing? Have you been receiving the money that I said you'll get? She says, well, Rog, let me start with Duncan, man. I call her and I say, and she says, well, Duncan, yeah, he was giving me 1,000 pounds every month. Good guy. She says, Shegel, give me 1,000 pounds, you know, maybe every two months, every three months, sometimes every six months, but there'll be times where he definitely missed out. I go to Rog. She says, Rog, since the day you left, I ain't even heard of him. I ain't even heard from him. See, it's funny, but I think all of us fall into one of these categories. My question is, which one are you? Because doesn't Jesus describe the church as his bride? So if Jesus has given you a certain amount and he expects for you to give 10% to his bride, what position are you in? Because imagine how, how I would feel about Rog, that I've been, I promised him that I'll give him 10,000 every month. And I said, out of that 10,000, just give my, just give my fiance just a thousand out of it. And I heard that he was giving nothing out of everything that I gave him. That would break my heart. Shegel, to me, he's pretty much on the same page. Because he's inconsistent with it. And sometimes being inconsistent can be worse than not doing anything at all. But then Duncan, on the other hand, every single time I gave him money, first thing he would do is give to the person that I required for him to give to. This is an illustration of what tithing looks like and my question for every single one of you is what category do you fall into? Thank you guys. Give it up for them guys. <clears throat> Seriously speaking, what category do you fall into? And I had to ask God, God, what is it? Why is it, God, that some of your people just struggle to give 10%? You know what he said back to me? He said it's because the reason why some of them struggle to give 10% is because they simply don't understand that 100% of what they have comes from me. And the truth is, for you to really be able to master the concept of tithing, you have to believe in your heart that 100% of what you have comes from God. You have to believe in Psalms 24 verse 1, 
where it says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof meaning that everything on earth belongs to God including finances including your income so if everything belongs to God your father why will he leave his children hanging you have to believe that a hundred percent of what you have comes from God and all he requires is ten percent back to his bride All he wants is 10% back to his bride from everything that he has given you. I was in the book of Romans this week. I remember a scripture that stood out to me. I remember where exactly it is. It's either Romans 8 or Romans 7. It says, The God who gave you Jesus Christ himself. Why would he not give you everything else that you need? Those are words that we have to believe in. The God who gave you his only son. Why won't he give you everything else that you need? Believe in the truth in those words. And that's the truth about tithing. I want to reassure some people that God doesn't hate you because you don't tithe. God doesn't hate you because you've never tithed. And even the people after this message that don't go on to tithe, God still won't hate you. But I would like for you to do a heart check and ask yourself these two important questions. Question number one. Why is it that I struggle to give 10% to the one who gave me 100%? And question number two, would I rather have 100% of my income with no blessing on it or 90% of my income with God's wholehearted supernatural blessing on it? And weigh up the odds. I think if you answer both questions, you'll come to one conclusion. God can do so much more with your 90% than you can do with your 100% on your own. Believe in those words. Back for everyone to rise on their feet. we go into a brief time of prayer the truth is that there are probably some people in here who still don't really understand the importance of tithing the truth is you'll never understand the importance of tithing until you understand the story of the cross until you understand that there is a God in heaven who so desperately wanted a relationship with you but there was a gap in between you and him called sin and he sent his only son to fill the gap a gap that only he could fill and Jesus Christ came down and gave 100% of everything that he was until you understand that Jesus Christ came and gave 100% you'll never understand why you need to give 10 so if there's anybody here right now that you want to accept true relationship with Jesus Christ I want to give you that opportunity because like I said you'll never understand the importance of tithing until you understand where you stand with Christ so if there's anybody here that wants to accept relationship with Jesus Christ today I'd like to ask you to just raise your hand I'll give you a few seconds to just let the Holy Spirit press on your heart because that pressing feeling that you can feel it's him tugging on your heart saying that he wants you to come to him if that's you today and you want relationship with Jesus Christ I'll give you one more chance to just make that public declaration and just raise your hands I 
And if that's you, I'd just like for you to say this salvation prayer. Lord Jesus, I admit that I am a sinner. I have lived my life for myself only and I am sorry. Today I choose to repent and accept your forgiveness. I believe that you died on a cross for me to save me. You did what I could not do on my own. Come to you now, Jesus. And I ask that you take control of my life. I give it all to you. From this day forward, Jesus, help me to live every day for you. And in a way that pleases you. I love you, Jesus. And I thank you that I will spend all eternity with you. Amen. Church, will we celebrate those people who have made that decision? That decision to walk with Jesus Christ and spend eternity with him. That's not a light decision. So church, come on, let's celebrate them. Like their lives have truly just been changed because they have. Amen. And if you said that prayer and you meant it, I'd like to encourage you to scan the barcode. Oh, it's text now. I think it should be to scan a barcode, but if that doesn't come up, um, text save to this number or preferably see some of the members of our welcome team if you did make that decision I'll just ask them to raise their hand in the air you can see them at the back there so if you made that decision if you made that decision will you just go see them and the reason why we ask you to do that is because we as a church we don't want you to do this walk on your own but we want to do this walk with you and we don't just want to pray for you but we also want to pray with you so Please join us in doing this journey with Jesus. It's better done together than done on your own. Finally, for every single, for every other person here, uh, I think there are about three categories that probably every single one of us fall into. And if you fall into these categories, which should probably be everyone, I want you to pray for a few moments. The three categories are if you're one, somebody who truly never believed in tithing like you were actually against tithing but you want to come back to Christ and you've seen his truth you want to come back to doing tithing it's category number one if you're in category number two someone who maybe just didn't really understand tithing you kind of did it a bit because your parents told you to and you kind of grew up in church but now you understand it for yourself because you know one of the reasons you know a live church was made is because we don't we don't want a bunch of people who who are living off of their relationship or, or off of their relationship with god from their parents but we want you to have personal relationships so if you fall under that category where maybe you were tithing and doing all that stuff because your parents told you to or you did it in the church you grew up in that's the second category if you're the third category where maybe you tithe consistently and you're just asking God to give you the grace to remain in that mindset that the enemy will never sway you from that mindset one or three of us in those categories or three of us one or three categories to pray a prayer now that God you will give us the grace to remain in this mentality come on can we all pray those prayers God give us the grace to remain in this mentality of tithing and Father God for all the people who who are who are new to this concept of tithing Father God I just I just pray oh God that you will confirm these words in their hearts oh God Father God it's only your your true word that can lead to hearts being convicted so God I'm believing oh God that you've convicted some people's hearts today oh God and God I pray oh God that their conviction will follow action in the name of Jesus and they will begin to do as your word commands in the name of Jesus and Father God I pray for those who are maybe living off of their parents mentality Father God I thank you because you have given them their own truth Jesus and God I ask that you will help them to remain and walk in this truth Jesus God I thank you for every single person's life God I thank you because all things truly come from you God I thank you because every single one of us you have called your sons and daughters and you will never forsake us nor leave us Father God confirm this to us O oh God Father God, I pray that this week like never before, this month like never before, this year, oh God, like never before, show us that you are in control of all things and that you will always provide for us. Father God, I pray on behalf of your children that they will see yourself, that they will see you as Jehovah Jireh, Jesus, the God that indeed does provide. Father God, I pray, oh God, that none of us, Jesus, none of us will lack in any area 
even when it comes to our finances. And God, I pray for those who are believing you for financial breakthrough right now. God, I pray, oh God, that you will show yourself to them as Jehovah Jireh, oh God, and you will come through for them, oh God. And God, I pray, oh God, that as you do come through for them, oh God, they will begin to trust you in ways that they've never trusted you before. God, you know some people's situations. God, you know that some people see their situations as impossible situations. But God, I'm believing that you will show up in their lives in a way that they never expected, Jesus. And regardless of what that financial situation is, God, regardless of what that problem is, God, show yourself to them as the God who will always provide. And God, I pray that as they see this, oh God, it will expand their hearts of generosity, oh God. God, I thank you for who you are. God, we thank you not just for what you do, but for who you are. God, we thank you for everything you've done for us in the past. Jesus, we're so grateful. And even if you didn't do another thing, it would be enough. God, I thank you because you are so good that you will continue to do new things for us. God, I thank you for this word. I pray that this word will truly rest on your people's hearts. And God, I pray that this word will not just bring temporary change, but God, this word will bring permanent change, oh God. Bring your people to a true place of repentance, oh God. Help us to see things how you see things, Jesus. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, church, give God some glory. Give God some praise. If you believe, if you believe that God has spoken to you today, come on, why don't you give him a true shout of praise today? I want to give every single one of us a few moments to give their tithes and their offerings. I do this because I believe that after you've heard the word, hearing the word must be followed with actions for we are not just ones who want to be hearers of the word, but we want to be doers of the word. I want to give you an opportunity to give your tithes and offering. So I'm past my phone. I will never ever ever preach anything on this altar that I do not myself do. So I will also give my offering. I gave my tithe at the beginning of the month. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is only part one of a message that it's titled, It's a Heart Issue. This week we spoke about tithes. Next week we'll be speaking about offering. I feel like I can trust all of you guys. When it comes to telling you what next week's sermon's about. I believe that there will not be people who will run away because you know next week's sermon is about offering. And for everyone who's given, I'd just like to ask for you to maybe raise your envelopes or raise your phones or or whatever else you used to give. Just raise your phones or your envelopes as a sign of just, you know, you're surrendering this to God. I'm just going to pray over it very quick. Father God, I thank you because the earth is yours and the fullness thereof. And everything that we have comes from you. Father God, I pray that we will be ones who never lose this mentality. Father God, your word says, if we try you in this area of our finances, we will be blessed. Father God, I am believing that every single person who has tried you in this area of their finances, they shall live a blessed life, Jesus. Father God, I am believing that every single person who has tried you in this area of their finances shall see fruit from it in Jesus' name. Father God, I pray, O oh God, that this new mentality that some of us has gained shall be a mentality that never loses our minds and our hearts, O oh God. Father God, I thank you for this heart surgery that you have done for us, O oh God. God, I know that next week it will be even greater. But Father God, I pray that you will confirm all of your words with signs and wonders, O oh God. God, I ask one more time that you will bless every single member of this church. In Jesus' name. Amen. And the church said, come on alive church, give God a shout of praise.
Amen, amen. What an amazing word um, from our brother Toby. Um, can we all just stretch our hands to, towards Toby? Um, the Bible says in Galatians 1, verse 10, I'm quickly going to read it. It says, Paul says, For I am now trying to persuade people or God, or am I striving? Or am I striving to please people? If I was still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. And I think um, what Toby did was so brave in a sense where he, he wasn't focused so much on necessarily tithing, but I think this actually showed Toby's heart for people. I think Toby wants the best for the church and we can see this in his passion on this to topic. And that's purely because he loves God, but he doesn't only love God, he loves people as well. So I want us to just raise our um, stretch our hands towards him let's just pray for him and let's just ask the lord to continue to help him that even in this area of his purpose that the lord will continue to work with him for the bible tells us that he's given us the power and the desire to do what pleases him so as toby has this desire that comes from god to please him i ask lord god that you continue to help him oh god lord i pray that as he's water lord you will continue to water oh god lord i pray that this word will bear fruits in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that this word will be confirmed with miracles, signs and wonders in the name of Jesus, and that all the glory, honor and adoration will return to you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen, amen. So we've come to the end of the service, guys. Oh, but no one, you guys are just, no, you guys are joke. I can't lie. It's cool, it's calm. So we've come to the end of the service. So I'm quickly going to say a few announcements before we go. So the first announcement is every Monday at 9 p.m. AC Praise. So every Monday at 9 p.m. we come together as a church on Zoom to pray about different things. So if you are someone who, you know, you want to build your prayer life, you want to grow in the place of prayer, I encourage you, please, please join us every 9 p.m. on a Monday for prayers. Amen? Amen. Uh, cool. Also, I wanted to say, if, it, if it's your first time here, can you please like, raise your hand again? If it's your first time in the church, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, give, make some noise for them. Um, I just wanted to say, where's the welcome team? So if at the end of the service, please speak to the welcome team. We just want to welcome you. We just want to get to know you a bit better. Um, please do stay for a bit if you want to just meet with everyone else. We're lovely people, I can assure you. And we would just love to get to know you. Amen. Amen. Um, every Tuesday, well not every Tuesday, every second and fourth Tuesday we have AC Connect. So this is our small connect group. Um, so every second Tuesday we have this online and every fourth Tuesday of the month we have it in person. So this Tuesday we'll be having a session. Please I encourage you guys to come. We've been um, in a series called Letters to the Church where we've been studying the different letters that Jesus says to the um, seven churches in Revelation. So please, it's an amazing time to fellowship. If you want to grow in your wisdom and knowledge of the word, then I encourage you to please come and fellowship with us. Amen? Amen. Okay, so the next thing I want to say is spirit and soul. So spirit and soul is an initiative here at Life Church with the outreach team and the prayer team where we come together and we pray from 10 a.m. every last Saturday of the month. Okay, sorry. This month is at 11 a.m. We come and we pray. And then afterwards, we'll be going to Stratford to outreach. So if you want to be part of this, we encourage everyone. This is not only just for the outreach team or the prayer team. But if you would love to spread the good news of Jesus Christ to people, then we encourage you to come join us in church and then we'll make our way to Stratford. Uh, so please do come. This is the last Saturday of every month. Amen. Amen. And the last announcement is if you have any prayer requests um, please do go to the VIP room so that's literally through these doors and then the room on your left um, and someone in the mem someone in the prayer team will come and meet you and um, agree with you in prayer so if you would like to be prayed for please do go there and we'll love to see you there all right so that's the end of the service please let's rise as I just share a word of prayer and then we can enjoy each other yeah that sounded a bit weird sorry yeah ignore that part <laughs> uh heavenly father i thank you i thank you so much because in the presence of the lord there is fullness of joy god i thank you so much for your peace that is here with us god i thank you so much for this amazing service oh god i thank you for 
the, the, the session of worship that we had. I thank you because we were able to adore you in such a great way. God, I thank you so much for the word, the word that was very much in season. And God, I even pray that we will bear the fruits of this service in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that as we go through this week, oh God, that you will give us a testimony in the name of Jesus, that we will come back to give you all the glory, honor, and adoration. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. <laughs> Goodbye, Alive Church. Have an amazing week and God bless you. Summer shining through, calling on my friends, asking what's the move. Feeling a little different, I'm on something new. Today, today, I ain't gonna let no clouds get in my way. The only road I'm walking is the one I pick. Catch me sitting in the sun, no time for shade. Today, today, Ooh. this is the day that the Lord has made, Ooh. and I ain't gonna let it slip away. I'm gonna be joyful. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm gonna be joyful. Today, I'm gonna be joyful. Ooh, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna gonna be joyful. I got the feeling that you get when you get new kicks Bell ringing on the last day of singing. Yeah, high fiving everybody, but we out of here. So fast, life comes and goes Make it last, best slow your road They don't take it as a choice But you gotta know that today's the day This is the day that the Lord has made And I ain't gonna let it slip away, nah I'm gonna be joyful Gonna be, I'm gonna be joyful Gonna be joyful today, today. I got the joy dropped down to my heart, down to my heart, down to my heart. I got the joy, joy down to my heart, down to my heart, down to my heart. I got the J O Y down to my heart, down to my heart, down to my heart. I got the joy, joy down to my heart. Today, today.